SATA cables are a little bit easier to work with. SATA connections are much simplified. If you look at your motherboard that has SATA connections on there, first thing you'll notice is they're much smaller. And so there's much tinier in the way that they are operate. They've got little keys built into them as well. So you can only plug the cable in one particular way. That makes it easy. But notice there's a lot of them. This motherboard is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different SATA connections. So you've got some different capabilities there. Now, the reason you have all of those connections is because you can only plug one device in on an individual connection on the motherboard. With our PATA, we plugged in this big long cable, and that data cable itself was able to support two devices. Our SATA cable, much smaller, very tiny. This is the data for PATA and the data for SATA. Look at the differences. So they take up a lot less room, but you can only put one device at the end of this SATA cable. You can't chain them together. You can't have multiple devices. It's one connection on the motherboard, one connection on the drive. It makes it very easy to work with because I only need to plug in to one link that's here. If the system that you're in supports the SATA power, there is a specialized connection just for the SATA power. What's nice about the SATA power in most cases is that it's designed to be hot pluggable. So I can unplug this while my system is turned on, replace the drive, and plug it back in again. Not all SATA connections and all power supplies support that, so you want to be sure that that's the case, but almost all of them do. If you're running the traditional 4-pin or Molex type connector, you don't have that functionality. Some of the SATA drives support both types of power. You only need to plug into one of these. So I would plug into the Molex connection or I would plug into my SATA connection, not both. Would not use both of those at the same time. It doesn't need to, that to happen. If you're not quite certain exactly how it works, again, your documentation may be right on the front of the drive itself that shows you the SATA power, the serial cable, where all your jumper settings are, and the legacy power. Notice that you have different options here to enable different functionality. If you're on a system that can only support SATA running at 150 megabytes per second, you may want to jumper pin 5 and 6 right here so that it will only run at the slower speed. This drive is designed to run at the faster speed so that you're able to get the maximum throughput out of it with the SATA 300 megabytes per second. On a legacy system that doesn't have SATA power in its power supply, then this is how you would plug in. You plug in your connection here for your data and your connection here for your power. And you connect it on the other side on your motherboard for this SATA and make sure that this is connecting properly into your power supply. And that's it. Mount your drive, and you've now got a SATA drive. Whenever you're installing these storage devices, just keep in mind that you should always unplug the power. Make sure that you're not just turned off, but physically unplug from the power so that there's no accidental discharge of electricity. You want to be very careful about that. Notice that there are also four screws generally that are used to connect a drive into your system. A drive that rattles around or vibrates is going to be much less effective than a drive that is simply very, very tight and not moving. That head on the drive is just floating very minusculely right above the drive. And any shaking whatsoever actually affects your ability to read and write information from that drive. So make sure you use all the screws and that that drive isn't going anywhere when it's running. And also don't block the airflow. Make sure that you've got all the air going through. The more devices you add to a computer, the hotter it's going to be. And the hotter it is, the harder it's able to get cool. SATA, many people go to a SATA connection because, as you saw, those cables are really small. When you get rid of all those ribbon cables from inside of your computer and you go to those very small SATA cables, the airflow is much better. So it's something you might want to consider when you're planning out how you'd like your system to work. Removable storage is almost a little bit easier to work with because we're not usually working inside of a computer. Usually we have an external device that we're plugging into that can be moved back and forth. But there are certain things you should be aware of. Removable is not indestructible. Even though we're disconnecting this, it's not plugged in and it's not spinning around, these are still very fragile items. You want to take care of them whenever you're moving them. And because they're not inside of a computer, there's a much more of a chance of causing a problem of it falling on the ground or getting crushed by something else. You want to make sure that you take care of those. This is also magnetic media. If it is something that is an optical media, like a CD-ROM or a DVD-ROM or a Blu-ray, we also want to make sure that it is in a place where you don't have a lot of moisture. You want to be sure that it's not very humid. 
the more humidity is the more what we call rot on DVDs will occur as it begins to oxidize and some of the chemicals that are used on those particular systems begin to, to just disintegrate and eat away over time. That happens over a very, very, very long time, but we obviously want to take care of this. This obviously has some important data on it. You want to be sure it's taken care of. Nothing is forever, of course. Only having one copy of something is not a backup. We need multiple copies to really be backed up. Many people recommend at least having three individual copies of a particular file to really be safe. That way you've got one you work with normally. You've got one backup perhaps that you keep on site and even better have a backup that you keep off site. That way if anything happens to the local vicinity of your computer, there's a fire or somebody breaks in and steals everything, you've at least got a copy that's somewhere that could not be affected by any of those pieces. Let's review what we've learned about these storage devices and installing and configuring them. Which connector is used in the middle of a 40 wire pad of cable? Remember the 40 wire is different than the 80 wire. The one that's in the middle of the cable on the 40 wire is the master drive. The next question is, what is the best way to store removable media? And we were just talking about the importance of storing that. And your best case is to put it in a cool and dry place if you're going to keep it over a long period of time. And our last question is, what is the maximum number of devices that can be connected to a SATA interface? We saw the SATA had all those different ports on the motherboard. How many individual devices, though, can we plug into just one of those interfaces? Well, it's almost a trick question here. It's a one-to-one -one when we're talking about SATA. Unlike PADA, where we could put at least two devices on a single ribbon cable, that SATA drive and SATA interface is designed for only one device. Well, that covers what we needed to know for our 227.02 section 1.1, where we now can plug in all of these different types of storage devices and be able to get them up and running inside of our computer. If you'd like to watch any of our free a videos, we've got message boards. You can send me an email. There's a lot more you can visit at our website at freeaplus.com.